Hi there, my name's Emily and this is my channel, The Redheaded Ravenclaw. Today I'm finally going to be talking about the top 10 books that I read in 2019. I talked about it previously on my channel, but I recently left my old job, got a new job, moved to a different city, and this week I got sick, so I just had a lot of things going on and haven't had time to film, but here I am today talking about my favorite books that I read in 2019. These are not just books published in 2019, they're just books that I read in 2019, as with my worst books and disappointing books videos that I publish. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go over the top 10. And starting at number 10, we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I am so upset that I put off reading this book for so long because I've only heard wonderful things. And I've discovered several things about myself, my reading taste this year, and one of them is that I love morally gray characters. And that's basically the premise of this book is just like morals and just like that in between of black and white. So this follows Victor and Eli, and there are dual timelines. The first is when the two of them are in college and they have to come up with a thesis and Victor and Eli become interested in EOs or extraordinaries. And they learn that in you can become an extraordinary if you experience a near-death experience. And so they decide to try it for themselves. And then the other um, timeline is 10 years later where Victor is out of prison. He's escaped and he kind of uh, is seeking revenge um, against Eli for something that happened in the past. And it just goes between the two timelines talking about their... Um, former friendship and what went wrong and all of these things is so interesting. I loved reading about characters that were a little bit older when they, they are in college. I think they're like 23 or 22. Um, in the 10 years forward parts, they're both 32. Uh, so it's just very interesting to read about characters that are older, that have more um, agency in making decisions and uh, the ability to kind of make decisions that are not black and white. And I loved the different elements of how extraordinaries interact with people and society and what it means for society. And I'm so excited to continue on with the duology and read Vengeful soon. Number nine on my list is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book sweeped the internet and the book reading community by storm. Um, I'm so thankful I read it, and it's really funny that I read this because I bought it actually while I was in Washington, D.C., and this follows Alex and Henry. Alex is the first son of the first female president in the United States in an kind of alternate reality of the 2016 presidential election, and Henry is the Prince of Wales, and they kind of have a negative relationship they've had to interact with through publicity and things like that um, and then they kind of start to fall for each other and it's just a story about what it means for them to be in a relationship and to have to deal with the public and I just I really really love this I'm not somebody who knows a lot about politics so I really enjoyed getting the political aspects of this um, and learning more about that and just kind of seeing you know, the different um, hypothetical situation that could have happened if we had a female president. Um, she, the female president in this story is also, um, I think she's Hispanic. So um, it's just a really great look. It was so, so funny. I think this is the funniest book I read this year. Um, I just swooned over Alex and Henry's relationship. And I also really loved their friendships with the other people in their lives. Um, I also discovered this year that I'm a big fan of friendship groups and that makes sense because I'm somebody who um, really likes character driven books. So this one just really impacted with impacted me, stuck with me and um, yeah, I, I loved it so, so much. The next book on my list is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. And this is about a girl named Morgan and she is cursed to die when she turns 12, I believe. And so she is kind of prepared for that. She's been prepared for that her whole life. And the curse decides to fulfill itself essentially a year early. And then she 
kind of gets swept away by this eccentric man named Jupiter North. And then she learns that she gets to compete in these trials to be able to go to this special school of people with different abilities. And I've seen a lot of people compare this book to Harry Potter, and it definitely has some similarities, but on its own, this book is just so magical and whimsical. It is a middle grade novel, and I just really love that it is like, it handles some darker topics than what you would kind of expect from a middle grade novel, and I guess that goes like in par with Harry Potter and the later books, but um, I just, I fell in love with the characters and the story. Um, there were twists and turns that I wasn't expecting. I'm super, super thrilled to continue on with the series, um, but I just, I loved this story. I loved um, the magic system and the different types of magic and things that were going on, and I'm really, really thrilled that I read it this year. Next on my list is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. And this year I participated in the Diviner's Read Along that um, a bunch of YouTubers were hosting. And I just really, really have enjoyed this series so far. But Before the Devil Breaks You has been my favorite in the series so far. Um, the Diviner's series is about um, Evie O'Neill who can touch objects and see their history, especially connected to the person that owns the object. And there are other people who are diviners with different abilities and they kind of have to work together when um, some murders start happening. And this is all set in 1920s New York. Um, the series is so diverse. I am just like impressed every single time I read a different book in this series with how diverse the characters are, how the situations reflect history and how they can, like how the books can like expand on a part of history that is not commonly talked about in terms of like the the diverse people who were alive then that you know were probably um treated wrong and in different situations like that um i especially liked before the devil breaks you because it talked more about some of the characters that i'm more interested in including memphis and um I just, I really liked that this one delved more into the ghost aspect and the tensions were getting really, really high. And so I'm so excited to read the final book next month when it comes out. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm ready and I just, I love this book and I love this series. And that's why it is at number seven on my list. Number six is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. And this book is about a girl named Frances who is like top of her class. She's like the best girl. Um, and she is a fan artist. She draws this, uh, she draws fan art for a podcast that she really likes um, called Universe City. And she gets the opportunity to draw fan art for the podcast. And she eventually meets the podcast creator and they form a friendship and this story was just so powerful and tells like a really important story of like being okay with choosing that college isn't necessarily for you um it also is a great look into anxiety and depression and Francis and Alad's friendship is one of the most interesting and like wholesome yet like realistic friendship that I've read about and I just really really loved their story. I loved um, the dynamics between them, the dynamics between them and other characters and the and all of the characters intertwined. Um, I just I love that it the story reflects difficulties in friendships because of mental illness, because of miscommunication or whatever it may be. Um, but ultimately like being able to mend your feelings and relationships and coming back together uh, is just such a powerful story. I listened to the audiobook and it was just perfect. I loved the pacing. I loved the narrators. Oh, it was just wonderful and I am really excited to continue reading more from Alice Oseman in the future and I think that uh, Radio Silence definitely has qualities of being rereadable, and I definitely plan on rereading it in the future. 
Number five on my list is Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stephen. This book is about a girl named Billy, and her father is a pastor at a church in their small town called Otters Holt, and she and her friends called the Hexagon um, end up accidentally setting the church on fire, and they have to start doing some community service to help pay back for the damage that they caused and um, help kind of mend their like relationship with the church and the community. And also they, in doing the community service, they're working to save this festival that their um, city or their town puts on every year. And I think the reason that this book impacted me so much is because of the friendship group and because of Billy's self-discovery. Um, because it reflects some self-discovery and things that I've been doing throughout this year and I just really connected with her as a character. Um, I love the different dynamics of the characters, their relationships. I loved seeing them do different things like going to um, conventions where they were cosplaying and like helping save the festival, working together, making connections in the community and just kind of also like focusing on tradition and like it was just such a like dynamic story of friendship and relationships and kind of like trying to find your own identity as outside of your friendship group but also like how you fit in among them and um i just love the writing style i read it as an ebook and i would really love to read it physically um, so I can annotate it or take notes because I just, uh, the story sat with me so, like, well and I, I just want to pick out the lines and things that I want to keep with me forever because I know that there are a bunch and I will definitely be rereading this book soon. Um, but yeah, I, I loved the representation. I love, uh, so much about this book and it definitely deserves the hype that a lot of people have given it like Lala from Books and Lala and Chelsea from Chelsea Dolly Reads. Um, so I'm really, really glad I finally picked it up. Number four on my list is In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. And this is the fourth book in the Where Were Children series. And I really enjoyed the series as a whole, but In an Absent Dream has been my favorite by far. The series follows kids who get to go to portal worlds, kind of like Alice in Wonderland or um, like Narnia, things like that. And um, they go to these portal worlds, but for whatever reason, they have to come back to the real world and they are having trouble adjusting back to the real world because they want to be back in the portal world in most situations. And in, in an absent dream, we follow Lundy, who is a character um, we met in the first book and they kind of go back and forth like present day on the odd number books and past in the even number books at least that's the pattern that's followed so far um and I just again like there's a theme here of books that I like I found so many characters that connected that I connected with that um I saw myself in Lundy is in a portal world that is called the Goblin Market and it is very um like focused on uh bartering and like deals that are very focused on specific rules and you have to pay attention to what you're offering because it can be twisted against you sort of and you have to pay your debts um, when you make barters and things like that and I found that Lundy just I related to her as a character so much because she follows rules and she is stuck between wanting to be with her family and wanting to be in this portal world and uh, I can definitely relate especially like having gone off to college um, in a different city when my family kind of wanted me to stay home and kind of learning about being myself when I was away uh, I can definitely connect to Lundy's story I love the storytelling. I love the setting of the Goblin Market. Um, and it's just my favorite one in the series so far. I'm very excited to continue on with the series. Um, I hope that Lundy is in future books. I don't remember for sure if that is a possibility. <laughs>
I don't remember if that's a possibility because it's been a while since I read In an Absent Dream, but I definitely want to reread the entire series. And uh, I've listened to all of them on audiobook and I've really enjoyed the audiobooks. Um, but yeah, I loved it so, so much. And it will definitely be um, one that I hold near and dear to my heart forever. Okay, now we're down to the top three books that I read this year. And each of these books I have not stopped thinking about since I read them. They just like made my entire year and they are quite different, I feel. Um, but each of them impacted me and just like, fueled my fire for reading so deeply that I knew that they would be up high on this list. Number three on this list is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I have recommended this book to so many people over the last year because I cannot shut up about it. I love it so, so much. This book follows Frances, who is a dressmaker, and she makes daring dresses in the time, in the I think it's the Victorian time era that she is living in and one day the prince sees her dress that she creates that's very daring that nobody kind of expects and he hires her for um, him to be his personal dressmaker and when Frances gets hired she doesn't know that Prince Sebastian actually likes to wear women's clothing um, and assumes this alter ego as Lady Cristalia. And this book, it has just such a wonderful commentary on the fact that clothing assumes no gender. Um, I know I said women's clothing a minute ago, but it's just like Prince Sebastian is allowed to express himself as Lady Cristalia or as himself and kind of like has to come to terms with um, his responsibilities as prince and what he wants to do, like being dressed up in these fancy gowns and wigs and makeup and kind of battling between that and the discussion of how his family reacts and um, how Francis has to deal with like not giving away that Lady Cristalia is Prince Sebastian and so she's not allowed to let people know that what Lady Cristalia is wearing are her designs and because then they would know that since she Prince Sebastian hired her um, that Lady Cristalia was Prince Sebastian. I just love this story so much. The artwork is stunning. I just love these images um, and I this is just, I, I don't even have words for how much I loved it. I just think it's beautiful and a touching story of friendship and um, self-discovery. And I will reread this over and over and over. And I hope that Jen Wang writes more graphic novels because I, because I will read whatever she comes out with. Number two on my list kind of is a an interesting story because I think Part of the reason why I love it so much is because of the timing of when I read it and then the other part of it is just like purely because it's very similar to like my favorite book of all time in terms of like the theme um, and that book is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I loved this book so much. I listened to the audiobook and it was kind of weird. There were like weird edits on the audiobook that I listened to, but I got the physical copy for Christmas and I'm planning on doing a reread soon so I can annotate it. And this book follows Elizabeth and she works in a library where she's kind of being trained to become a protector of grimoires. And grimoires are these books that can turn into monsters and they have different levels. And one day she kind of gets into some trouble and she has to work with a sorcerer named Nathaniel and librarians and sorcerers do not get along. Um, sorcerers kind of use grimoires and they're the ones that kind of um, have this capability to use dark magic and it's they just have a tense relationship. But um, the story just tells the uh, process of Elizabeth and Nathaniel becoming closer and beginning a relationship, sort of, and I just love this so, so much. 
If you don't know, I'm in school to become a librarian. I work in a library. I love books about libraries and librarians. My favorite book of all time is Strange the Dreamer. Um, and I just really connected with this book. Um, and what I was talking about, the timing, um, in this book, there is a demon named Silas, who is a companion and to um, Nathaniel, and they essentially have a, a deal where when Nathaniel dies, Silas will get to consume his soul. And I had just watched the first season of Black Butler uh, when I read this book, and Sebastian in Black Butler reminds me so much, or, or Silas reminds me so much of Sebastian in Black Butler, and I just like fell in love with Silas's character. He's one of my new favorite characters of all time. Um, he's very dark and kind of mysterious, but also very helpful and loyal um, as his relationship with Nathaniel is bound by their bond through um, Nathaniel's soul. And I, like, I've heard a lot of complaints about this story, like, having kind of a lack of plot and being predictable, but honestly, like, I didn't care. I loved the characters. I loved just, like, the vibe of the book, and I'm excited to reread it, and um, I think that this will remain a favorite for a really long time because it just, uh, I don't know, I... If you can see just like I don't know how I don't have words for how much I love this also I think this is one of the prettiest covers of the entire year um but yeah I love this book all right now we're down to my number one favorite book of the year it is not a 2019 release and I just have not stopped thinking about this book at all the one of the characters in this book is one of my new favorite characters of all time and it, t it ticks off like so many of the things I learned that I love this year. And I think it kind of jump-started the thinking process that I decided and realized that I learned those things. My number one favorite book of 2019 is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Six of Crows duology. And though I really enjoyed Six of Crows, I absolutely loved Crooked Kingdom. And this book is, um, well, the duology is about a group of six people. Um, they are kind of, not necessarily low lives, but they kind of like all come from different places and they are performing heists and they kind of are just general badasses. Um, they will do anything to help each other out in that six uh, member group and they kind of are professionals at scamming and like just doing what they need to to survive and i fell in love with kaz brecker the main i'll say the main character um he is morally gray he is no nonsense and i just i love his backstory i love everything about him i relate to him on the fact that he is germaphobic though it's not said um he cannot stand physical touch with other people um and you kind of learn more about that in his backstory but uh i am mildly germaphobic um definitely not to the extent where i can't touch people but um i just i i loved the representation in this book i loved the I don't know, like I said, I love friendship groups, I love morally great characters, I love um, <clears throat> rep like books with great representation of um, like diverse characters, diverse relationships, um, and this book has it all. I am 100% going to reread this duology this year and annotate it, and uh, this book made me cry. And probably not for the reason that most people would cry in this book, but just like the last like important scene, if you read this, you know what it is. I was just like happy crying and I, I just, I just want to hug this book forever. And um, yeah, this is my number one book of the year. 
I haven't shut up about it. I wish I could convince everybody to read this duology. I read all of Leigh Bardugo's books in the Grisha universe this year except for Language of Thorns and yeah I I love it I loved it so 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 much um and I'll just I'll stop talking about it now because I could gush about it forever but this is my number one book of the year so there you guys have it those are my top 10 books of the year I had a great reading year overall I came out with my uh, worst books and most disappointing books first because I didn't have that many honestly and there were way more books that I was actually excited to talk about than there were that I was like upset over um, but yeah I'm so so excited to be reading more this year to be rereading some of those that are my favorites and I hope to find a lot of new favorites hopefully some that are related to these series or whatever um, but anyways that's all for me I think that's the end of my 2019 videos, um, but yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.